Hello everyone, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Friends, today we are going to learn a very important ratio that's called price earning ratio. You have no idea what the relevance of this ratio is all about. I mean, every stakeholder, every investor, the company, let it be anyone, all of them are just interested in one single thing that's called price to earning ratio. So what exactly is this? Why it has so relevance? Let's get into the nitty gritty of this particular ratio and learn how it can be valuable in our life too. As you can see in the graph over here on, on 2nd of Feb, Google surpassed the Apple as the most valuable company. I mean, Google's market capitalization surpassed the Apple market cap. How did this thing happen? So let us very closely look at this price earning ratio. Uh, this example, I mean, over here, you can see in the graph. Google's P ratio was close enough to 30.58x. However, the Apple's price earning ratio was close enough to 10.20x. I mean, despite of the low P of Apple, I mean, Apple stock have taken the beating. Apple returned to minus 25.8 negative in the past one year. However, Google returned approximately 30% positive in the corresponding period. So a couple of very quick questions on this for you. Is Apple a buy? Is Google a sell? Is Apple now cheaper than Google? Which PE are we talking about over here? Or, or, or which PE we should go for? Forward PE? Trailing PE ratio? And there's one last question. Why are Apple prices decreasing even though it has low PE ratio? Being Having a low PE ratio is good compared to the industry. So all those questions we need to address. To understand the answer to all the question above, it is important for us to understand the core and probably the most important valuation parameter. That is the PE multiple or price earning ratio. If you want to learn the, I mean, uh, uh, on the, on the nitty gritty part, we'll, we'll get into the example so that you'll be able to get a hold on this. What is price earning ratio? PE ratio is primarily derived from, from the payback multiple. So payback means how many years it will take to get your money back. Likewise, think of PE as how many years earning it will take for an investor to recover the price paid for the share. How many years earning it will take for an investor to recover the price paid for the share. For example, if the PE multiple is 10x, this basically implies that for each dollar of the earning, the investor has paid $10. Hence, it will take 10 years of earnings for the investors to recover the price paid. Let's do some PE earning ratio calculation on the Excel sheet. Now, at the very first end, let's see how the example works. Let us see exactly the formula and number part, which will get us to the core of the ratio. Now, PE ratio calculation. Let us take a very quick PE ratio example of Colgate and calculation uh, it's, its PE multiple. As of February 26, Colgate's price per share, Colgate's price per share, just hold on, was close enough to $67.61. Colgate's earning per share, that is uh, the EPS, I'm just writing over here, EPS not going to repeat Colgate over there. EPS that is trailing for 12 months for 12 months is close enough to 67 uh, I mean sorry 1.509 so in this particular case the price earning ratio of this formula of this particular case is PE ratio is what price divided by the earnings okay so simple as you saw that it is not at all difficult to calculate the PE ratio. Now, let's see the different methods by which you can compute this. The first method is compare the historical price earning ratio of the company. See, graphical interpretation of PE multiple is no rocket science. If you're wondering how to create this price earning ratio graph, you can look at the investment banking charts. I mean, see, price earning ratio chart helps the investor visualize the valuation multiple of a stock or index over a period of time. In this price earning ratio example, graph of a company named Foodland uh, Farsi is depicted on a period of close enough to March 02 until March 07. So let's look at that. Now the above graph, it compares the current PE multiple with the historical price earning ratio. So we note that the above graph denotes that the stock is overvalued over here 
and uh, as compared to the historical T numbers. So, likewise from the above price earning ratio, the band chart we note that the stock is trading at the upper price earning ratio of the band of 20.2x implying a higher valuation as compared to valuation as compared to the historical ratio. Now there is a second method compare the price earning ratio of the company with the other company within the sector that's called close enough to comparable companies method so let us look how that thing works now looking at this particular table what exactly do you see or what exactly do you note we note that the colgate's price earning uh, ratio is 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 44.55x however the industry price earning ratio is close enough to 61.99 this implies that on one side Colgate is trading at approximately 44 times its earning. The industry is trading approximately 62 times its earning. This is no brainer. You would like to pay $44 per dollar earning for a Colgate rather than opting for $62 per earning for an industry. Absolutely. Why would you pay 62 rather than that you will pay 44 That is much better. Third method is interpretation using the comparable comms. Now, from the above table, the method, the interpretation using the comparable comps, the above table is nothing but a comparable comp. A comparable comp lists all the relevant industry competitors, its financial forecast, and important valuation parameters. In the table, we have considered only PE multiple as this is the PE multiple discussion. A couple of questions for you with this respect of comp table provided above. Which is the cheapest stock? Which one is the most expensive? Hope you found the answer guess should not to be too difficult let us dive into the rational for the same now which is the cheapest stock the first average trailing price earning ratio is 19.2 x so there is only one stock that is lower than the average trailing price earning ratio that is triple b name triple b likewise if you look at the average forward p multiple company triple b has lower forward price earning ratio that is its respective averages so strictly from the comp table, we note that the company's triple B is the cheapest stock, which is the most expensive stock. So there are three stocks which whose who's trailing PE is more than average trailing PE ratio. So company triple A, triple C and triple D. Out of this three, it is difficult to find the most expensive stock strictly on the basis of the trailing PE. All are closer to the trailing PE of 23x, as you can see triple a triple c and triple d so let us now compare the forward pe ratio of these three stocks we note that for 2016 stock triple d has the highest forward pe ratio of 28.7 x in 2016 and 38.3 x in 2017 e this implies that the stock triple d is the most expensive most expensive stock from the above table though the price earning ratio formula is easy to calculate one should keep in mind that following important points regarding the PE multiples the two company may have different growth prospects. The quality of the earning may differ. That is, one company's earning may be more volatile than the others. The balance sheet strength of the two company may be different. So a high PE multiple is sometimes cited as a reason for not buying a stock. However, a fast growing companies are typically associated with high PEs. Obviously, investing in fast growing companies can be profitable. Therefore, a high PE multiple should not necessarily prevent investor investing in a stock. Now, how to find the target price using the price earning ratio? Not only it is important for us to understand whether the stock is a buy or sell, it is equally important to understand the target price of the stock under the consideration. Now, what is the target price? It is nothing but what you expect the stock price to be, say it at the end of 2016 or 2017, etc. So let us look at the company PE example. Okay. Let us assume that Wall Street Mojo is operating in the service sector along with its peers called Triple A, Triple B, Triple C, Triple D, Triple E, Triple F, Triple G, and Triple H. Now, in order to find the target price of the Wall Street Mojo, we should find the average trailing PE and forward PE. We note that the average trailing PE ratio is 56.5x and the forward PE ratio is 47.9x and 43.2x. So, Wall Street price is going to be EPS of Wall Street Mojo into forward PE ratio. So let's assume that the Wall Street Mojo in 2016 E and 2017 E has an EPS of close enough to let's say 4 and 5. I'm just writing 4 and 5 for 2016 and 2017 of Wall Street Mojo. Now this was the 
EPS, given the PE multiple of the formula, I mean, we can calculate the Wall Street Mojo's PE 2016 target price. The target price is going to be $4 into 47.9. So, the target price is going to be $4 into 47.9 for 2016. 2016E, the target price is going to be $5. This is not 2017. Just take care. $5 into 43.2216. So, theoretically, the target price, they look good. Practically, the target price look all, all wrong. Why? Target price look all wrong due to the presence of the outliers of the comparable table that we prepared. Please note that the Triple H has the price earning ratio closer to 200x. There could be various reason of higher price earning ratio of Triple H. However, we are here to find out the appropriate target price for the Wall Street Mojo. For finding the correct target price, we need to remove the outliers like Triple H, revise the comparable table and find out the new average PE multiple. Using this modified PE multiples, we can recalculate the target price. The revised target price is going to be $4 into 17.2 and for 2016E of Wall Street Mojo and $5 into 18.2 that will give us 91. So industry and com country price earning ratio. If you do not have access to the paid database like Bloomberg, Factset, Factiva, then you can look at some of the free resources for such data. Okay. Additionally, if you want to look at the various P multiples of different countries, you can look at the uh, resources like Yardeni Research. That is really helpful to you. Now, the rationale for using the price earning ratio. P multiple is the most commonly used equity multiple. Reason, this is the data availability. You can easily find out both the historical earning as well as the forecast earning. Some of the websites that you can refer for, to find this are Yahoo Finance, Reuters. If you compare this with the discounted cash flow approach, the, this PE multiple based valuation approach is not sensitive to assumption. In DCF, changes in VAC or growth rate assumption can dramatically change the valuation. Can be, it can be used for comparison of companies with sectors and markets that have similar accounting policies. Efforts are required, I mean, is relatively less. A typical DCF model may take close enough to 10 to 15 days of analyst time. However, a comparable PE com can be prepared in a matter of hours. Now let's talk about the limitation of the PE multiple of price earning ratio. See the balance sheet risk, risk is not taken into account. This implies that the fundamental position of the company is not reflected correctly in the PE multiple. For example, like cash ratio, current ratio, asset test ratio, etc. are not taken into account. The cash flows are not taken into account. Cash flows from the operations, from the investment, from the financing are not reflected in the price earning ratio. Third, different debt to equity structure can have a significant impact on the company's earning. Earnings can vary widely for companies that have debt due to component of interest payments affecting the earning per share. Fourth, it cannot be used when earnings are negative. For example, like boxing, you cannot simply find P multiple for such unprofitable companies. One must use normalized earnings or forward multiples in such case. Fifth, earnings are subjected to different accounting policies. It can be easily be, manip be manipulated by the management. Let us take a quick look at the P ratio of the uh, of a ratio example below. Assume that there are two companies, double A and double uh, B. Think of this company as the identical twins. I know it is not possible for companies, but for a moment in a blue sky scenario, let's assume this is so. Identical sales cost, clients and almost everything is possible. In such a case, you should not have any preference to buy specific stock as the valuation of both the companies should be same. Introducing slight twist now, assuming that double A follows straight line depreciation policy and double B follows accelerated depreciation policy. This is the only change between the two companies. Straight line charges equal depreciation over the useful life. Accelerated depreciation policy charges higher depreciation in initial year and lower depreciation in the final year. So, as you can see in the table, the sales, cogs and various details are given. As noted about the P multiple of double A is, uh, I mean, close enough to 22.9x while the P E multiple of double B is 38.1x. So, which one will you buy i mean given the information we are inclined to favor double a as its p multiple is lower however a very assumption that these two companies are identical twins and should command the same valuation is challenged because we use p multiple we can use other ratio like ab by beta to solve such issues however we'll we'll come to that discussion in another post for another tutorial okay but for the moment please note that p ratio have some serious limitation in its universal application for the reason above it is 
also recommended to use earnings as earning before exceptional items. So let's conclude this. P ratio remains one of the widely used valuation methodologies. On one side, the price earning ratio is very easy to calculate and understand. However, its application can be very complex and most tricky. Please be very careful while considering the price earning ratio. Do consider not only the just the trailing PE ratio, but also the forward PE ratio to find out the appropriate target price. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Good luck. Thank you. Goodbye. Cheers.